a type of problem that you're going to be asked to um, to solve on the next exam and basically the future final exam is a synthesis problem. A synthesis plays a big role in organic chemistry. The idea is we're trying to make a molecule, a target molecule, and we have to make it from basically any molecule that we choose, but those molecules have to obey certain rules. In real life, those molecules would have to obey, like, say, cost constraints. Like, um, you can have $5 a gram or material, or they have to um, be constrained of, they have to be non-toxic, or you have uh, lots of other um, type of things. Cost is usually the big thing. Well, in 341, um, we're not going to really worry about costs that much. So instead, our constraints are mainly going to be um, the size constraints of molecules, meaning you have to synthesize the following molecule from, say, four carbons or less, and carbon-containing molecules that you use must be non-ionic. So as sort of an example, I have an ether right here. And this ether, if we look, has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbons. And we have to synthesize this eventually from molecules that contain four carbons or less. The way to approach synthesis problems is we work backwards. We find, figure out one step to make this from any material in the world that we want. And so with that, we have to function, we have to focus on the functional group. In this case, we have an ether. And ethers, they come from SN2 reactions. Meaning you're going to make either this carbon-oxygen bond, which we'll call A, or you can make this carbon-oxygen bond, which I'll call B. Well, if we make it from A, when we split that bond, we are basically going to split it. The carbon side gets a leaving group, say a Br. The oxygen side, well, that gets a sodium, because you're going to need some sort of alkoxide, a good nucleophile. And so we, here we have carbons 1, 2, and 3. Here we have carbons 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. That's if we use root A. If we use root B, we're going to be breaking this carbon oxygen bond. So the oxygen side again gets a sodium, the carbon side gets a leaving group such as Br. Number it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Numbering is going to be very helpful in these types of problems. So now we have two possible roots, A and B, and we have to ask ourselves, which is better? Well, the way we do that is just by judging which reaction would give us a higher yield of this compound right here. Here we have on the B side, we have a, an alkoxide. Alkoxides do SN2 and E2. And we have a primary bromide that does SN2. And so we have agreement. SN2, SN2. Root A, on the other hand, we have an alkoxide that does SN2 and E2. Here on this carbon, we have a Secondary bromides. Secondary bromides do SN1, SN2, 
E1 and E2. Here we have agreement on S2 and E2, S2 and E2, and when there's a tie between these two, E2 generally wins out. So this would give significant portion of E2. While as root B on the other hand would just give S and 2 as the major product of what we want. So root B is a better choice. So that's the root that we're going to carry forward. And we are not going to work on from root A. So root B. If we take a look at this, this molecule has three carbons, so it's four carbons less, but it's ionic because of the sodium. So we have to make him. We can't stop here. And the way we make him, alkoxides, they come from alcohols, and we add sodium hydride to alcohols to make alkoxides. And that's how we do it. Sodium hydride is ionic, but doesn't contain any carbon, so we're okay there. Check. This alcohol here has one, two, three carbons, has four carbons or less. It also is non-ionic. So check. So we don't have to make him anymore. Let's look at our other compound that we have. It has, it's non-ionic, so that's good. However, it's one, two, three, four, five carbons, not four. And so we need to synthesize him. We can't use him as is. We have to be able to make him. Well, the functional group in this case is a primary bromide. Primary bromides, now we make them via SN2 reactions. We do it by adding HBr. To an alcohol. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Notice here we have one, two, three, four, five carbons or less. Five carbons. That still doesn't obey the rules, so we have to make him. A lot of the synthesis problems, you're going to want to get back to the alcohol as soon as you can, because alcohols are where are the products of carbon-carbon bond forming reactions, mainly from Grignard reactions. It's only Grignard reactions really make the carbon-carbon bonds that we need. So in this case, a Grignard reaction, you make a bond typically between the alpha carbon and the beta carbon. and it's typically a two-step procedure. The first step is done in ether. Second step is the acid workup step. And to figure out what two molecules you combine, again, you split this bond here between the alpha carbon and the beta carbon carbon-4 gets a carbonyl. What's attached to carbon-4 right now are two hydrogens. Those two hydrogens are still attached to carbon-4. What's not attached anymore is carbon-5 because that's the bond we're going to make. 5, 6, 7, Eight. Carbon-5 needs something. Right now, it looks like it's a CH3, and this alkane can't react with this, with the carbonyl. You need this to be a Grignard reagent. And a Grignard reagent has a magnesium and a halogen attached. So MgBr is a, usually a good one to go for. And now this is going to facilitate the reaction where we're going to form a new carbon-carbon bond between 4 and 5, then protonate the oxygen in the second step to give us our product right here. This, this material 
has one carbon less and it's not, and it's non-ionic. So we don't have to make him. We can start with him. This, on the other hand, is an ionic compound. These are Grignard reagents. So we need to make him. And the way you make a Grignard reagent is you add magnesium and ether to a halide. Five, six, seven, eight, and the magnesium just goes between the carbon bromine bond. Now this has one, two, three, four, four carbons or less, and it's non-ionic, so check, we can stop there. And so this is the full synthesis of this target ether. You're going to be called on to do these types of synthesis on exams and on problem sets. Um, the important thing to remember is to work backwards, single steps at a time, and keep in mind the rules. Each The synthesis rules may be different depending on how many carbons are allowed or what starting materials you can use.